Hi, this is Skip Stewart, Vice President and Chief Improvement Officer with Baptist Memorial Healthcare. And once again, I'm here with my good friends, Dr. Edgar Schein and Peter Schein. And today we wanna to talk about more about the attitude of humble inquiry, but specifically we wanna talk about this very interesting mnemonic that Peter and Ed have developed that didn't necessarily make it into the book, but I think it's a very helpful uh, little tool. So let me kind of hit the pause and Peter, let me turn to you and explain this mnemonic that we call sharing the mic. Yeah, Skip, I'd love to. And you know, it's it's funny when you write books like this because they're never really finished. Uh, <laughs> there's probably a bunch of other things that we talk about all the time that didn't make it into the book either. So apologies to the readers, but uh, let's let's go through this one. and And what this was about was we often were asked sort of, what do you mean by the humble inquiry attitude? And um, what does that really mean as, as, as distinct from the different kinds of inquiry that are described in the book? So that's what this uh, mnemonic sharing the mic means. And the, the, the three letter acronym here is MIC or MIC. And I'll sort of talk through what that is. Um, the M is motivation. And the point about motivation is that you actually care and are curious about the other person and the situation that they're in. So, you know, that's not always going to be the case. But generally, if you're working with groups and you're working with individuals and you're problem solving, um, you have to get to a level of actually caring what's going on in the situation, what's going on with that other person. And, um, you know, if you do care, the chances are we're human beings, the chances are you will develop some curiosity about what's actually going on. If you're not there, then maybe this isn't a relationship that you need to try to develop. But um, the mic is your motivation, which is that you care and you're curious. Um, the the I is is intervention, and that's um, because you have to embrace that recognition that you are intervening in somebody else's thoughts. You're intervening in somebody else's process, and um, the key there is that you you express this intervention intervention in the form of questions, not in the form of telling or advising. So the intervention is a process of asking and deep listening. So that's the I. And then the C is contribution. And this might be, you know, that this might be a little bit of a head fake because we're talking about this being a drawing somebody out process. But we have to recognize that we are also contributing to the, to the dialogue and we're contributing to that other person's thought or to our collective ability to um, process what's happening. And the key in contribution is that um, it has to be done with empathy. In other words, um, uh, there, there's this idea that um, you don't want to cross the net, right? You have to let the other person be the other person and contribute you know, with empathy but also recognizing that in order to sort of move the relationship process going, um, you have to start revealing a little bit about yourself. So you're not just contributing, you know, good thoughts and good questions. You're also contributing in the way of, of revealing a little bit about your own self and your own motivations and your own vulnerabilities in order to, to build that relationship substrate. <laughs> So it's sharing the mic, you know, playing on that expression. We haven't come up with the acronym called dropping the mic. That'll be another one for later. <laughs> but this is about sharing and sharing the mic. And, the, you know, the image for people to, to think about is they've got a mic in their hand and they're, you know, they're, they're passing it between in order to develop the relationship. That's sharing the mic. The way in which I would elaborate on that is because people often complain that yeah but my client or the other person gets tired of me asking questions 
It's humble inquiry, just an endless process of asking questions. And the answer to that is no, of course not. And that's where the word attitude comes in. Humble inquiry is a way of managing my part of the interaction with you, but it is an interaction. So I ask you what's worrying you, and you tell me a bunch of stuff. And as Peter said, I better be able to hear you. And what I next say, whether it's a question or whether it's a comment or whether it's a tell, I'm going to be intervening in that client's thought process. And what we've discovered is that very often the appropriate next intervention is actually to say something about myself, not necessarily another question, not necessarily tell me more. But I might say, you know, I get that. I hear you, which is sort of a tell, but it's a tell about me that I'm expressing empathy. And so the, the way to think about humble inquiry is not as a single set of questions, but as an interactive process where we need to be careful how we hear and how we respond because everything we, the facilitator, is doing is intervening in that relationship. And that makes it tricky and why some people say, this is harder than I thought. <laughs> it's because we're playing tennis and tennis doesn't work if one or the other player drops the racket. Yeah, I, I, th I think it's it, it does get into that tricky space, though, when we've talked about advice and um, uh, advice is is a little bit like um, that idea of crossing the net that I mentioned that, um, you know, you, you you could end up in a situation where you're you're having a good conversation with somebody, but then they start to feel like you're turning you're turning the conversation on yourself. And that's where that's where, you know, learning sort of to 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 read the other person and develop that empathy. If they start to feel like this is this you're turning this into your thing. You're turning this into your conversation. This turning you're turning this into your problem. That's not really helping. That's not sharing the mic. That's grabbing the mic. And so, you know, crossing the net, grabbing the mic, it's the same idea of recognizing that you want to share some information so that collectively you start to build more understanding between the two of you or or within the group. But if you're if you're grabbing the mic or hogging the mic, then it becomes all about you. And that's the, then you might as well just be telling and advising because it's it it shuts people off. It it as Ed likes to say, it puts them one down, and you don't want to do that. Well, this has been great, Ed and Peter, and it reminds me of the, the phrase that both of you taught me that, you know, life really is a series of conversations, and everything happens through a conversation and relationships. And so thank you so much for uh, giving us this really helpful uh, mnemonic that helps us think about sharing the mic and a way to think about uh, that that tennis match that's going on uh, that what we call a conversation. Thank you all so much today for your time. Thank you.